Uh, welcome back for another uh, toolkit entry here for Math 2. Uh, this topic is going to be called finding the equation of a parabola. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be writing the equation in what we call intercept form. So that form is y equals a, which just represents a, a number, x minus b, and then times the quantity x minus c. And b and c are both numbers, and they represent the x-intercepts. Got some data over here for you. We have four points that are part of the parabola. And really, there's two steps to it. One of them is to find the x-intercepts. The second one is to find the value of a. So let's kind of get started here, and I'll kind of show you where this all comes from. So let's say I had this equation, and I told you it was y equals x squared minus 2x minus 15. If you wanted to find the x-intercepts, you would set y equal to 0 because uh, the x-intercepts, uh, no matter where they are, it's always the coordinate for y is, is 0. So it's always x, x comma 0. So we can set y equal to 0. Then we would factor this. And so you can just trust me. If you were to factor this, you would get x minus 5 as 1 parentheses and then x plus 3. Didn't show all my work, but that's what the answer would be. Then what we would do is we would say, well, x minus 5 must equal 0 or x plus 3 must equal 0 using the zero product property. Therefore, x is 5 or x is negative 3. And then from this, the whole point in solving here is these are now your x-intercepts. One of them is 5 comma 0 and the other one is negative 3 comma 0. So what you want to do in this case here is we have all these data points up here is you actually want to find the x-intercepts. So one of them is 2, 0, and one of them is 4, 0. So they're actually given to you here, so you don't have to work very hard for them at all. So based on that, if we actually know the coordinates, kind of like down here where we already know the answer, could you work backwards to this line right here, to the line where we have parentheses here? Well, yeah, you can. So if it, if it were 5, 0, you would write x minus 5. So this time here, we have two extra intercepts. One of them is 2, 0, and the other one is 4, 0. So what we would write is we would write x minus 2 as one of our parentheses. And then because we have 4, 0 as our other one, we would write x minus 4. And then to finish off, we'd say y equals, and then we're going to leave the a out there for now, and I'll explain where that comes from. All right, so that's where this all comes from. That's how we come up with the, the parentheses here using the x-intercepts. So that's kind of step one. I'm going to go ahead and erase all this here. We're going to need that room here in a couple of minutes. So the question is, well, why do we have this a value out here? What, what's the big deal about this? Well, it turns out if these are your x-intercepts, 2, 0, and 4, 0, literally there's lots of uh, uh, parabolas that could go through those two points. So I created a second slide right here. And just to show you here, I have the same x-intercepts here of x minus 2 and x minus 4 in all three equations. And I put a different value for a. One of them is 3. Here a is negative 2. And another one it's 0.5. So a can even be a, a fractional answer or a decimal answer. So you'll notice here, these are the graphs of all three of them. And you'll notice they all intercept at the exact same x-coordinates. So really, just knowing the x-intercepts is really not quite enough. We have to know what this number is out here, and we, and we just call it A. All right, so now let's figure out how could we figure out A. So what you want to do is you want to pick any of the remaining points. So I am going to pick this point right here. So that point is 0, 16. I could have easily chosen 7, 30, but I like 0, 16 because the numbers are smaller and one of them is 0. So that means x is 0 and y is 16. So literally what you can do is using these values for x and y, you can substitute over here. So I'm going to go ahead now and say y is no longer y, it's 16. a is what we're solving for. x is now 0, so I'm going to say 0 minus 2. And x is 0 over here too, so I'm going to say 0 minus 4. And now it's just a matter of solving this equation. So 16 equals a. 0 minus 2 is negative 2. And then 0 minus 4 is negative 4. If we multiply all three of these together, negative 4 times negative 2 is 8. So we get 16 equals 8 times a. And now if we divide by 8 on both sides, we get 2 equals a. So our equation is y equals 2. And then we have parentheses x minus 2, x minus 4. The other thing is, is that we could also find the vertex. So let's go ahead and add that one in too. So what we're going to do next is we are going to find the vertex. 
So the question is, well, where is the vertex? We know the x-intercepts. And once again, if we go back to these graphs here, you will notice no matter which vertex it is, here's a vertex, there's a vertex, there's a vertex. What's true about every single one of them is the x value is 1, 2, 3. And the reason why is it's the vertex x coordinate is always halfway between the x-intercepts. So because 2 is one of them and the other x-intercept is 4, halfway between 2 and 4 is 3. Another way to do that is just take the x-intercepts, add them together, and divide by 2. So in other words, it's like the average. So that's 6, and 6 divided by 2 is 3. So that means our vertex, no matter what, is going to be 3 comma something. And we'll call that y, because we're going to find out what the y coordinate is here in a minute. So therefore, going back here, our vertex must be 3 comma y. So if we want to figure out what y is, we can use this equation. So since we're trying to solve for y, we're going to leave it alone as y equals. And now x, every time we see an x, it's going to be 3. So it's going to be 2 times 3 minus 2 times 3 minus 4. 3 minus 2 is 1, so it equals 2 times 1. 3 minus 4 is negative 1. And if we multiply all three of these numbers together, 2 times 1 is 2, times this is negative 2. So therefore, our vertex is 3 comma negative 2. So that's how you'd also find the vertex on top of it. But this first part, I'm going to go ahead and circle it here, is how you actually find the equation. And the vertex is kind of bonus information. So that's it.